Hello, welcome to Mandel and Friends, hosted by yours truly, Mandel Frazier. Today we have a very special guest with us, Rob Armstrong. People Magazine called Rob Armstrong one of the hottest cartoonists in America. His award-winning comic strip, Jumpstart, is published every day in the LA Times, the Philadelphia Inquirer, the New York Daily News, the Boston Globe, and over 350 other newspapers here in the U.S. and abroad. It can also be seen daily on the internet at gocomics.com. A new book about his life has been published by Reader's Digest called Fearless, A Cartoonist's Guide to Life. Please help me to welcome nationally syndicated cartoonist, my good friend and future best-selling author, Rob Armstrong. Hey, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic. I like How this. You doing? This is nice, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's an honor. Honor to be here, brother. I'm glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. You look good. Like you're ready for action, man. <laughs> you know what? They say that, um, you know, I guess people learn how to just grow old gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I'm very graceful myself. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, thank you for coming to the show. Oh, man, no, it's not. You are my inaugural guest, my first guest. First show, let's do it. Yes, let's first do it. First show. So, you know, I got to start off by asking, well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on your new book. Congratulations on your career. And just I congratulations on being an excellent person. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Likewise, likewise. We, we go back a long ways, actually. We do. Back when I was, uh, I was trying to be an actor, I used to run into you on a set, or we'd be auditioning together, I should say. And, uh... Man, I've I been losing auditions to you, man. I said, I got to get out of that. Not quit my day job. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I guess, well, uh, how did you get started? In, uh, I started, I, I've actually been drawing my entire life. Okay. I, I consider my start to have happened in, in, um, in high school. Okay. Because in high school, I sold something to a real newspaper. So I went from amateur to pro when I was 17. It was amazing. Um. My, my high school had a program that allowed me to study cartooning under the tutelage of someone. And I found a great mentor, a woman named Signe Wilkinson. And Signe got my stuff in shape. And when it was, I, when I felt I was ready at 17, I walked into the Philadelphia Tribune. And at 17, I sold some, uh, some political cartoons to them. Um, but I consider my, my career to have really started as, as a child. I think anyone who has a passion and a talent to go with that passion usually begins in, in childhood. Wow. So that's not really, begin. like, you know, when I got to college and all that, I did a comic strip for the school newspaper. Okay. And that's when I started to go on a kind of a roll um, that I'm still on, actually. Because in college, I went to Syracuse. And when I was at Syracuse, the orange man. I'm an orange man. So when I was, I like that. Yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> When I got accepted to Syracuse, I came on and said, Mom, I'm an orange man. I'm an orange man. Wow. They call him the Syracuse orange now, and they cut the man part out. Is that right? But, uh, wow. yeah, so when I got to Syracuse, and I'm kind of cutting ahead of some important things, but I'll come back to that. When I got to Syracuse, I believed I was ready to do a daily strip. And a daily comic strip, I want to just draw my, my characters for you. Okay. A daily comic strip requires um, tremendous focus and dedication. All right. uh, the comic that I do now, Jumpstart, is not the one I did in in uh, in college. But I will draw the strip I do now real quick. These are the characters. There's some people, if you read the funnies, you might be familiar with Joe and, and Marcy and Sonny and JoJo. Absolutely. This is a strip that runs in the Philadelphia Daily News, the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Los Angeles Times, uh, the Boston Globe. Uh... Wow. I just draw Joe and his wife. He's a cop, obviously. She's a nurse. That's how Marcy looks. Wow. So I've been doing this strip for so long that I can draw it fast <laughs> like this. <laughs> this oh is what my happens. gosh. This is what happens when you do a comic strip every day. So jumpstart. That's my thing now. I'm going to sign this, Mandel. In fact. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put your name on this. <laughs> Mandel, this drawing is worth. About seven dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> so don't sell it. Don't sell it. Don't right sell. Now. Don't sell it right now. So what happened to me? The price will go up, but I don't want to talk about that. Okay, all right. Um, that is awesome. Can I see that for a second? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's oh for you, my brother. gosh! Look at this. 
this is going to go right back here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> My good friend, Rob Armstrong. Actually, Rob, um, before I met you, uh, actually, before I moved to L.A., uh, I used to always read your comic strip. Had no idea I was, I was going to meet you down the road. But long story short, I was always a big fan because it was the only African-American cartoon strip that, you know, that I got in the Detroit, uh, Detroit Free Press. Yeah. So uh, it's always an honor to, you know, meet somebody that you um, admire. Thank you, you know, man. For the most part. Um, the Free Press, by the way, was my second newspaper. When I got syndicated, when they signed, my, my, when they signed me to do Jumpstart, um, <clears throat> I was 26 years old. I was the youngest cartoonist in the country, actually, at that time. Okay. Um, one of uh, three African Americans. And the Free Press was my second paper. The LA Times was my first paper. Okay. I lived in Philadelphia where it took them years to buy, to buy Jumpstart. But, really? But today, it, it's... Um, Thank God, man. Listen, wow. it, it's, it's more than just a blessing. You hear that a lot. Oh, this is a blessing. This is a blessing. I mean, Mandel, sometimes a miracle occurs. Yes. And you have to acknowledge it as such. Now, the miracle isn't the contract I signed to do Jumpstart. The miracle is that there were a lot of things that happened in my life that could have easily derailed me. Uh, distracted me or frankly just frank discouraged me mm. um, the death of my oldest brother when I was a six year old um, my brother who was um, five years older was assaulted by the police which took my family down a terrible um, journey all through my teenage years so from the time I was 11 my brother was assaulted by the police when he was 16 and I was 11 so from the all through the 70s, basically, my family was embroiled in this fight with the police department where, um, you know, the things we read about today, the Trayvon right. Martins and the Ferguson's and all this was happening to me in the 70s. Right. So by the time this happened to the rest of the country, I was too familiar with it, almost numb to it. Uh, it was how I spent my youth. So all these things. And then my mom, who was, uh, oh, my goodness, uh, Mandel, my mom. When I talk about a miraculous human being, when I, when I call something I've written fearless, yes, it's about Dorothy Armstrong more so than it being about me. She was fearless. And she is the reason that I had the confidence to pursue cartooning. Because when I was um, three years old, four years old, I would draw the Flintstones and I would try to watch TV and draw Charlie Brown and all that. And she's the one. I mean, she's the one who said, you know what? You're going to become a syndicated cartoonist. I never heard that word before. But as a little child, she said, you're going to become a syndicated cartoonist. And I believed it. Wow. And I believed it. And there was no father in my life. There was no father to back that up or to take me to ball games or any of that. So I grew up completely without a father. I mean, utterly without a father. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, knew friend, I knew other friends who didn't have a dad in the house. I, we grew up in Philadelphia. I mean, right. I get it. Uh, but I didn't know any other kid who had no trace of a father. Like, okay. my dad was out of my life from birth. Okay. Reemerged when I was in my late 40s. Okay. When I was 48, my dad popped up and said, I'm your father and all that. And um, I said, okay. And we had a brief father-son relationship that lasted until he died two years later. So my mother's influence was that thing that fearless component. So I was able to overcome not just my brother's death, my, my oldest brother, right. but that fight with the city, which ended with three acquittals. Wow. The police officers who beat up my brother, um, cases of mistaken identity, all got acquitted. And it was then, let me show you how God works. Okay. So I was 12, right? My mom said, um, you can't come to school. I'm, I'm going to change your school. I'm going to change you to a, a, a different zip code. I said, what are you saying? What are you talking about? She said, I, I don't want you being around here. I said, being around where? This neighborhood. I don't want you being around here. I don't want you having friends around here. I don't want you going to school here. <laughs> I said, mom, where am I going to be uh, going to school? She said, private school. So... I had never heard the words private school in the same sentence. I didn't know what she was talking about. Right. I said, what, I'll be attending school by myself? She said, no, you'll be with other kids or gifted kids 
and college bound kids. <laughs> so she had me tested. So she was planning to see. She was planning to see. Planning to see. She wow. said, I'm going to get you into private school. I'm like, what was she talking about? She said, don't worry. They're going to test you to get into these schools, but don't worry. You're a genius. Uh, you want to get in. Don't worry about that. Found out I was not a genius. <laughs> Um, How did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> because they all said no. So I said, Mom, look, I came back. They don't want me to go out there. Because literally, they would, they would take you out there. You take a test. And then the, the paperwork comes back. And it, no, we're not going to. Robin's not ready for um, private school or anything. But she was just so determined that she kept me going, retested. And I was accepted to a private school. Now, wow. Here's the thing, and this is hard for me to say, but I'll say it to you. Okay. Because we all, listen, anyone who believes in God, anyone who has faith, um, you spend your, um, your, your life, you're in church, you hear a lot about have faith and believe and believe and believe. Mendel, I'm going to tell you something that may be different about me. Okay. I've actually gone beyond belief. I'm at the point of knowing, knowing how real God is. How did you get to that point that you know that you know? Well, when God performs certain things in your life, certain miraculous things, the process can be so painful mm. that you can either denounce him or you can know him. Um, if my brother hadn't gotten killed, my oldest brother was killed by... Um, uh, this is a gruesome thing to share with you. But when I was six years old, I had this older brother, and I get into this in my book, but he was just a daring child. He was an outsized little dude, man. He just did crazy things. And he used to play chicken with the train, with the subway train in Philly. We call it the L. So he would play chicken with the L. So, like, his friends would jump the turnstile okay. and leap between the chains connecting the cars oh my on the subway together they would leap and just get a free ride downtown right i mean all the time this was no big revelation my mom said to him here's some car fare pay like any other uh passenger don't jump that turnstile okay mom it's a saturday it was july 1st 1968 okay he paid his fare he was stepping onto the subway the L, but his friends were playing chicken. So my brother's over here where you are. The guy that steers the train is the same guy that closes and opens the door. Okay. He looked out this way and saw boys playing chicken and shut the door. My brother was walking on. You could see him. He didn't see him, man. And he had one, only had one foot in and he had one leg in and took off. Dismembered him. Dismembered him. He was um, he was thirteen. The reason I the reason I tell you that story and the reason I tell you that God's miraculous power is so evident in my life in my current reality yes. is that if my brother would have lived, and if five years later my other brother was not assaulted by the police, in other words, if things had gone in a normal way in my life, right. if tragedy never entered my life, I would not be sitting here talking to you. In fact, there is no way I'd be the most widely syndicated African-American in wow. history and all this other stuff. Tragedy produced this. So like I said before, you're either going to turn your back on God yes. or you're going to acknowledge him. And if you do, acknowledge him. We're not talking about some stale version of belief that you heard somewhere. It's what I'm talking about knowing. Like, I know you're sitting here in front of me. Yes, yes. I know he's in my life. It's not something I'm debating with people. I meet people all the time. I don't believe in all that. I, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't believe. Okay. I speak to a lot of kids, man. I go to a lot of colleges, a lot of universities, a lot of high schools. Okay. And I bring it right away. <laughs> I just tell them on stage, look, he's real. In my life. I don't believe in that. I said, okay. Uh, he's not waiting for you to start believing, actually. <laughs> he's real right now. 
<laughs> you know, Rob, you mentioned something. Uh, as you know, my platform is Faith, Fitness, and Focus. Absolutely. And I'm here by faith. You know, I moved to L.A. You know, to start my career in entertainment, and and doors has opened up. But you mentioned something else that was equally important, and that's the process. Going through the process. Right. Uh, one thing we do have in common. Um, I also just recently lost one of my older, bro my oldest brother. Oh man. Yes. I'm he's. Sorry, uh, brother. Thank you. Thank you. He was a. Um, that's the musician. That's the he, musician. Was, he was a drummer, yes. right? If I remember correctly. He was the original drummer for George Clinton and right, P-Funk. Right, You know, and he also played for Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan and he also played He's for Dramatics, boy. Temptations. And he was a Motown premier drummer, you know. Um, so the entertainment is in our blood. But right, for the most right. part, um, I don't know what it's like right. to lose a brother to a violent death, you know. Yeah. Um, there's seven of us. Okay, we all grew up in the church. You know, we all kind of straight out, you know, straight went our separate ways. Right. Some of us found our way back in. But the main thing is... Some still looking. I, some I still know. looking, you know. It's not, it's not over till it's over. But you mentioned, you tapped on something. Um, I'm thinking what you have experienced at such a young age with your brother, that could have just been the opposite in terms of what you could have accomplished in life. Right. You know, because some people turn it back on God. Sometimes it is the opposite. In fact, um, going through pain... Uh, surviving tragedy, particularly within your family, yes, often causes a kind of uh, reaction. They can't be God. There's no, there's no such thing as God. If there was a such thing as God, he wouldn't have allowed my mother to die, my father, my sister, my brother. See, God is not um, uh, going to do anything that you can't, um, uh, uh, you can't handle. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And for whatever reason, he knew I could handle these incredible losses yes. without becoming embittered toward him. Wow. Now, in the beginning, because I lost my mom finally, she, she never saw any of this. She never lived to see my book. She never lived to see my kids being born. I have two kids. I have a 19-year-old and 24-year-old. She never lived to see any of that, man. She died when I was 19. But by the time she passed away, Mandel, yes. she had already implanted in me all the determination I would need to survive the process you talked about. Mm -hmm. If you can't survive the process, success is not some moment. Right. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a day. Right. Success isn't like a Wednesday. Success is a process that is long, excruciating. Yes. And most importantly, most of it feels unsuccessful. Success feels unsuccessful. Yes, it does. For the majority of its time in your life. But it's never meant to stop you. It might slow you down. Right. I mean, God is like, look, not right now. <laughs> He'll tell you in a second, not right now. Not right now. You know, I used to always say that success is when preparation meets opportunity. Right. And um, there's no shortcuts to success. No you sense. may have short-term success, but you won't have peace. Right. You know, and to me, I you know, living in, you know, L.A. and you. You know, you're in the industry as well to a certain degree, and you see people come and go. And uh, they're not, they're not, you know, Rob, your book is really what I want to touch on because it's called Fearless. Why did you title this book Fearless? I think it need. I think we need fearlessness today. And it's so funny because um, the book came off the presses about a year ago, and we're living in these new political times where we're. It's sold fear all the time. Everybody wants to sell you fear. Right. Fear is easy to sell and it's easy to buy. Everybody can afford it. Everybody can buy it. That's why it's sold so successfully. Okay. Fear is undefeated. It just constantly is being thrown at you. Turn the TV on. Uh-oh, North Korea, this, that, another thing. You're constantly being told, be scared. Be scared of the police. Be scared of this. Be scared of that. If you're a black man, be scared of getting, getting stopped by the police. Fear is powerless <laughs> to a man who knows God. To a man, to a woman who knows the Lord. Give me some, Rob. Fear <laughs> is powerless yes. on us. Yes, yes. It wields no authority. If it wields even a little bit of authority, you can't succeed in your chosen career. You can't. You know, Rob, I'm listening to you talk, and you mentioned about your book. I have a surprise for you. Uh oh. This book right here that I have. <laughs> Wrapped in this plastic bag. And this is a surprise. I had no idea this was you. So you bought this? Well, actually, uh, you actually had um, 
agreed to help me out with an event that I did in the Valley. And what I found amazing about this book, <laughs> I read the reviews. I know it, it has five-star reviews on Amazon. I know Quincy Jones and the Schultz family uh, gave you uh, great uh uh, compliments regarding the book and your, I got some your good endorsements, no question. Some very good endorsements. But right here, you drew this cartoon for me, and it says, My first <laughs> I forgot sale. about this. This is funny. My first, zoom in on that. <laughs> My first sale. I'm the reason why this book is taking off, okay? Let's get that clear right now. Man, that was so funny. I forgot about this. This is Did crazy. you forget about yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, yes, this is your first book uh, that you gave to me. You said, Thanks, homie. And of course, that's a, I'm assuming that's me. Rob knew that I was going to change my hairstyle. That's why he drew this picture. That's actually Joe from my strip. That's Joe. That's that's the main character in Jumpstart. But that's what's, not Mandel. What's interesting is oh you you clearly purchased this. <laughs> yes. Uh, gave must have gave me twenty dollars. Yes. I think you charged me fifty. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about this, Rob. Okay, but no, I I, I really you, appreciate man. this. You know, um, I and appreciate. He it. says, "Stay fearless." Stay you know, fearless. Stay man. fearless. So, Rob, I mean, again. You're a successful cartoonist, right? Uh, future best-selling author. Thank God. Uh, you already uh, you speak at universities, you speak at colleges and right. high schools and different corporate settings, whatnot. What's next for Rob Armstrong? You know what? I would love to. Um, I would love to say that I know what's next. I really don't. Okay. <laughs> but the strip runs every day. I have a constant deadline that's on me. Okay. It's not burdensome to me. This is what I was cut out to do. I actually enjoy the challenge of coming up with something new every day. So I have that. But I would um I would love to have the show transit have the book perhaps transition to a movie or to TV or to have my strip, my comic strip transition to television or all of the above. Wow. And I'm pursuing all of the above. Absolutely. So so far, um, things are going well. I'm not superstitious i'm not saying i don't want to talk about something i just don't want to say for sure yes if i don't know for sure but man things are going really well and there's constant interest in both these things in both taking the book to the next level and and we're currently i have a meeting set up in one week to discuss taking the comic strip to tv wow which is nice yeah it's really that's exciting. awesome you know rob I don't, i'm sorry i i'm, I'm getting i'm getting sidetracked that watch is really <laughs> catching my attention. Every time you flash it, it's like bling, bling, bling. What kind of, where'd you get that watch from? <laughs> P- Palanti uh, Jewelers, handmade Palanti watches. They're really, really high end, and I could never afford one. But the Palanti people actually read the book and said, You do a lot of presentations. Um, this is our gift to you. So Wait a minute. You Palanti. read a book and you get a what? Twenty thousand dollar watch. I, I, I don't know if it's twenty. <laughs> I don't know if it's that. But the Palanti, it, like it. it is. It's very nice. And the Palanti people. Um, I was. That is a zoom in on this. Look at this watch. That is a nice watch. I didn't think they were perfect. You want to trade? My, I didn't think. You, oh, you, we, we can, you that's nice too, man. Let me, let me see that one. Well, I didn't get a sponsor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I'm still working my way up to the right, sponsor. Right. Rob, what are you passionate about in life? Well, I do all this for my family. Um, I've been blessed, man. My, uh, my wife and I, we have two kids. Okay. My daughter's completely on her own now. She's 24 years old. Awesome. Uh, my son is 19. He's still in college. Okay. But one of the things that my family um, has done for me, and I in turn do for them, they've always been a part of my comic strip. Like I don't even think I would have a, uh, a successful comic strip without characters based on my family. Wow. In other words, I know my family. I love them and how they are and writing about them talking about the love i have for them i don't write the things they say to me uh, that's not how you do a successful comic strip i don't it's not a journal where you talk to me and i do a joke about it. you can get beat down for that too you get a lot of trouble for that <laughs> my wife in particular <laughs> and you if i remember it correctly uh but my kids have this strong impact on my work because of how I feel about being a father. Like the greatest thing in the world is to have people who love you more than anyone else. That's what yes. that's what being a father is. Absolutely. <laughs> Your kids are in love with you. My kids think, you know, they think the world of you now. A dad then has to live up to that that heroic treatment. 
Wow. So that's why when I do my work, I'll, I think about that. I think about what do I represent to my kids? What do I represent to my wife? You know, how can I translate this feeling into my art? Wow. So that's what I'm passionate about. Rob, how can we get a hold of you? If somebody wants to reach out to you for speaking engagements or they want to follow you on social media, how can they reach out to you? I'm easy. I'm on uh, Facebook and all the platforms. Uh, okay. Rob Armstrong with two Bs. Okay. Um, you can email me. I'm Rob at RobArmstrong.com. Just remember, it's two Bs in my name. Two Bs. Two gotcha. Bs. Rob, so. it's been such a pleasure. Thank you for being on my show. Oh, man, thank Join you. Join us next week. We will have Ernest Thomas from What's Happening, Raj. This is Mandel Frazier with Mandel and Friends. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Women of Prominence. God bless you. Good night.